Hello, members of the RSGC Vinyl Club. I'm happy to be talking to you today about the Tragically Hip's Road Apples. This is an album that was recorded in 1991, before any of you were even alive. I had hair, and uh, was cool, believe it or not. Uh, this is a record that really captures where the band was at the time. These guys have just transitioned from being a club act, a bar act, a Queen's University act, and are on their way to being the biggest band in the land. And this is the album that you will hear them in that transition. You will hear them uh, discovering who they are. You'll hear Gord Downey introducing the uh, lyric um, style that is going to make him famous. You're going to see in this album and hear in this album a lot of what will make the band great and a lot of what was in their founding days. This is still a blues rock album. You're going to hear a lot of bluesy riffs. You're going to hear a little bit of The Doors, a little bit of The Rolling Stones, a lot of the influences that the band took with them into this album. And you're going to hear a lot of transition as well, and I'll, I'll note the songs and I'll tell you a little bit about how this is changing. This album is recorded uh, as the band is touring through the United States in 1990. They are doing almost three shows every weekend and a show on Thursday as well. They're getting into that 170 date range, which is insanity for a traveling band. They're traveling and playing a lot. They are really tight live. They've been together for seven years. Their success is coming a little bit overnight. It's, it's, it's creeping up on them. Not exactly expected, but these guys have been playing together literally since they were teenagers. They're now in their mid to late 20s, and so this band is coming together. You're going to hear on this album uh, a live, raw sound recorded right off the floor. They were so busy touring that some days they wouldn't even know where they were. And so they would ask the manager, where's the bus taking us? And when they got into New Orleans, Louisiana, they asked Daniel Lanois. Daniel Lanois was the producer of uh, U2 and the producer of Neil Young, and he had produced all sorts of great music. And he said, why don't you just come to my house? And so they went into Daniel Lanois' house, and they went into his living room, and they recorded this album right off the floor from his living room. And you're going to hear a raw, bluesy sound, nothing added on, not much layering, not much production. This is the Tragically Hip. This is who they were in this kind of bar band phase as they transition into the big arenas. You're going to hear that this is a remarkable album for two reasons. Number one, you're going to hear Gord Downey's vibrato. In the early days of recording these songs, in the early days of being a live performer, Gord didn't play an instrument. And so he used to often say that he wanted to send messages while he was singing. And so you'll see and hear these kinds of almost goat-like noises coming out of Gord Downey's voice. And he will hit this vibrato that will seem somewhat out of place with these blues rock numbers. And you'll notice them in a couple of different songs on this album. You're also going to see uh, and hear, rather, Gord Downey's lyrical genius coming to life here. This is where Gord is going to first begin referencing Canadian culture and history, and he's going to start mixing in different references into a single song to make these very layered, very deep. You often get songs that are about a number of things, not just one thing, and sometimes this gives you a great, great deal of depth in a song. Sometimes it is hard to follow, but it's never simple. These are songs with depth. This is music with depth, and this is the album where they really begin to become uh, what they became, Canada's band, the Tragically Hip, and you're going to hear references on this album to John Diefenbaker, a Prime Minister from the 50s. You're going to hear references to Tom Thompson, uh, the founder, the inspiration of the Group of Seven, a great painter in Canadian history. You're going to hear about Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and all these references to little towns in Canada that wouldn't really show up in our pop culture so much, and the Tragically Hip are really on the vanguard of that, telling Canadian stories to Canadian kids, making Canada cool in rock and roll music. This album, Road Apples, features two really quintessential hip numbers. The first one is Three Pistols, and Three Pistols is the second track you'll hear on the second side of the album. And Three Pistols tells the story of Tom Thompson. Thompson was a painter, uh, he was an impressionist artist, he was a uh, commercial artist in Toronto and he hated it so much that he'd head into the north. He'd head into Algonquin Park and he'd paint what he felt. And there's a great story in a book that was written about Tom Thompson. And it tells the story of Thompson seeing a winter storm and having to get outside to paint that storm. He wanted to paint it in its elements. He wanted to be amidst it. And Thompson goes outside to paint this uh, incredible snowstorm. And apparently, as his body shook from the cold, he's able to keep his hands steady as he paints the scene. And you'll hear Downey incorporate that into a lyric that says, I said to bring on a brand new renaissance, because I think I'm ready. I've been shaking all night long, but my hand is steady. And you'll get all these lyrics that are drawn from real moments in culture and history and art that make it, in my opinion, uh, that much cooler, that much more amazing. 
And I used to have these moments of great revel uh, of, uh, realization, these revelations, if you will, where I'd realize that Gord was referencing something real, and then I would dig further into it and find out that this album is full of that. He's really, really full of it. You'll hear a lyric about Bride of the Northern Woods, which is about this woman named Winnie Trainer, who was in love with Tom Thompson, and yet he would never return the love. And so she would go to his grave after he died and sweep away trinkets people had brought and left for him. You'll hear a lyric about uh, how she goes to the grave to sweep away things that are left behind for Tom. Uh, you're going to hear on this album uh, a song called Fiddler's Green, which is perhaps their most poignant and uh, sad song. It was inspired by Gord Downey's young nephew, Charles Gillespie, who passed away at a very young age of a heart ailment, and he died on September 17, 1990. And you'll hear the, the song open up with those words, September 17, for a girl I know it's Mother's Day. And it's Gord's sister, who he's speaking about, who lost her son. And Gord sings a lyric in the song that goes... Uh, the same wind that blows her hair blows her boy through Fiddler's Green. And Fiddler's Green is a Celtic heaven, a place where sailors would go when they were lost. And it is known as a, a place that is full of song and merriment and mirth and always had a fiddler to play a happy tune. And it was such a personal song for Downey's sister that he asked that it, that she asked, that it never be played live. And so it was played at Charles Gillespie's funeral, and then it was never played live until about 2006, so about 17 years after the recording of this album, uh, Gord's sister said to him, I think it's time, and I think it's a fitting tribute to Charles if you start playing it again. And so Downey began, and the band began, to play Fiddler's Green live uh, after all that time of it being a little too personal, a little too hurting uh, to play. And uh, ironically, on August 20th, when the Hip were playing their last show, nationally televised across the country with 12 million people watching, it was during Fiddler's Green, as Gord is singing about heaven and singing about what comes next, as he, of course, is facing a terminal illness, that uh, that's when he was most emotionally overcome. And if you watch that broadcast, he's fighting back tears uh, during this song. There are references on this album. There are blues riffs on this album. There are incredibly intelligent lyrics on this album. See if you can uh, figure out the line from Hamlet, which works its way into Three Pistols, which is kind of an amalgamation of the Tom Thompson story and Downey, just because he's so well-written, uh, so well-read, and so literate, will sneak a Hamlet reference in there for you. See if you can hear that. Listen to the blues riffs. You're going to get some great blues riffs here on Fight and Bring It All Back. Uh, and then the band ends off the album with the last of the unplucked gems, which apparently was just a jam they started playing that day in the living room of Daniel Lanois' house. And they played this jam, and it just kept going and going and going, and it started to sound melodic and musical and beautiful, and they really didn't have any way to end it. They didn't have any lyrics to go with it, and Gord just kind of improvises there on the spot. And this is a period in his career when he was often ranting on stage, where he would often tell these stories, uh, and bootlegs became very, very popular because you'd have these one-in-a-million performances that were not unlike anything else they've ever done and couldn't be repeated. And Last of the Unplucked Gems is one of those that's captured. And it's on this album because it just happened to happen uh, when they were recording, when the, the, the reels were rolling and Daniel Lanois captured it. This song, The Last of the Unplucked Gems, I think holds a special spot in the heart of the band because on this last tour when Downey was taking a break, he, doctor's orders, had to take a break during uh, this last concert, they would always play this song. They'd play it while he would go and rest and they would just kind of play this song through, and when Downey came back, they'd turn into something else, and they'd launch into another song. So there's a lot of nostalgia on this album. There's a lot of really great music on this album. There's a lot of depth on this album, and I think that you're really going to like it. If you're into blues rock, you're going to love this. If you're into the Tragically Hip, you're going to see their roots here. And uh, guess what? If you're into Canadian rock, this is the album that really launched the biggest touring act in our, act in our history, uh, these guys have sold more records in Canada than Garth Brooks and Elvis Presley combined. Imagine that. This is Canada's band. Here comes Road Apples by The Tragically Hip.